Hi everybody, Kathy Arbor here, and today we're going to be doing some jelly printing. <laughs> I'm actually low on jelly prints, believe it or not. And I thought, well, I may as well do a stream of, of how I do my jelly prints and why I use jelly prints. And, uh, oops, let me pop out chat here so I can see who's talking. And, um, yeah. So I have two jelly plates. And this one here is is nine by 12 roughly. And this one here is 10 by eight. And the reason why I like to do this is sometimes I'll just roll my brayer off onto the side plate and I'll get to use this too. Hey, Eileen, Brenda, good to see you. So wait a minute, I gotta get some paper. I have a bunch of, uh, I, I keep my newspapers for ro roll-offs or whatever you want to call it. I uh, might need to, uh, it's a little bit shiny here. Let me see the top. It works better. That's a little better. Not as shiny. I'm so happy you're doing jelly prints today. I haven't pulled mine out in a while. Oh, well, pull her out. <laughs> it's fun. Just play with it. You can always jelly over a jelly <laughs> if you don't like the first one. <laughs> or just get your gesso out. There's no uh, waste. Hey, Joan. Good to see you. So do I have to lighten this up maybe a little bit? Just a tad. Let's see. There. That's a little better. And I'm going to be using both um, crafters, paint, and acrylics for artists. You can use whatever you want. You can even get into watercolor. That's a little trickier because it it kind of collects. Um, you can do sprays, all kinds of, of different things. And today, actually, I haven't didn't have enough time to cut. I'm going to be trying out this paper. I just got a roll of this. <laughs> Um, it's 12 inches across by 1,100 feet. <laughs> and I got it from Uline. And it's white butcher paper. But it hasn't got any um, wax on it or um, acids in it or anything. So... It's not going to disturb your archival stuff. And it's a lot cheaper than it, if you were to get copy paper. I figured it out to be, um, if you figure out a 12 by 8 inch copy paper, well, they're not exactly that. And it works out to um, 1650 sheets <laughs> for uh, $39. So it's, it's a good bargain. And then two, being I like it's on a roll, so I got the dispenser also that dispenses it and it's got a blade on it. You can cut it with the blade on it. It's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And um, so I'm going to try it out and see what it's like. 
It's 40 pound weight. And what else? Hey, Lena. <laughs> we do not need more papers. Hey, <laughs> we can always use papers. What if, what if uh, I don't know, the shipping people, the truckers, like, what if we can't get pulp across the border anymore? <laughs> yeah, I can, but they had all kinds of papers. Oh, it's dangerous going on that Uline store. <laughs> they have everything there. And uh, so I thought I'd try this. Because this will also be great for the accordion... Um, what's it called, uh, style books where you need a really long piece of paper instead of gluing sheets together. Here we go. We can make our own. <laughs> so I want to try this and um, see how it works. Here's the if you line. 12 by 1,100 feet, 40-pound butcher paper, white. So I thought I'd try some of that. And I also have uh, deli paper. I have um, some, what else I got here? Deli paper, I have file folders, I have tissue, and I have a bit of uh, rice paper also. So I Uline has great prices. Yeah, they do. They have awesome prices. And the uh, little stand that comes with it is fantastic. You can either get a wall one or you can get the tabletop. I got the tabletop one. Um, do you want to see it? Because <laughs> I can bring it over if you want. It's not very big. Yeah, and they sent me a, a catalog. Yeah, it's humongous. I don't buy scrapbook papers since getting jelly. Yeah, exactly, Brenda. You don't need them. You want to see it? Okay, let me move this. <laughs> the um, the roll was 15 pounds. So you just, I'll bring you guys out a little bit. Oh, that's as far as it goes. <laughs> so it, you just uh, pull it out. Whoa! <laughs> awesome! You don't even have to use your scissors or get out your cutting uh, stuff. Yeah, like Hey, and you could make any size you want, 12 by 12, 8 by 12. You, and you can cut these smaller. If you don't want the 12 inch, just get your, your um, cutter out. Yeah, they had, uh, you could get it in different widths too. This is the smallest, 12 inch. You can get them in 18 inch. You can get them in um, 24, 36, 48. Whatever color, whatever you want, and they come in different things too. It's there's craft paper, colored craft paper. Um, what else? Oh, you'll have to go online. They have tons of stuff. We had a big one at the print shop I worked at. We should take it. <laughs> they should have. <laughs> what, Riri? You don't want to be being enabled? <laughs> yeah. um, let's see. I think I put it up on my shelf here so it's easy to 
move. No, better not. I'm gonna put it. I have to put it on my counter. So let me move my stencils. I I love the dispenser it's awesome like why didn't i think of this before <laughs> like, do some jelly prints and I think I'm gonna I want some more more um monotones like um staying analogous on one side of a color instead of mixing colors I'll do a few of those but I find I use most of my jelly prints for backgrounds so I don't want a really bright flash of, of um, pattern, per se. Once in a while, I'll do that. But on the majority, I use a lot of muted, I guess you could say, colors. Hey, Dot. Um, yeah, so what else? What else was I going to tell you? Um, oh, Eileen, you wanted to know more about um, printer paper, or not printer's pr paper, I guess you could say. Um, Eileen has enabled everyone when we were at Kathy and Colleen's on Tuesday. <laughs> hey, Candy, good to see you. Judy and uh, uh, she came out and said that she wanted to buy some uh, printer paper, not for your printer, but for printing on a print press, basically. And it is totally different. And we, well, I used to use it when I was in art school. Because I did uh, lithographs and uh, all types of different types of, of printmaking. Now, when we, this was a long time ago, guys, like this was 40 years plus ago. And um, now I imagine it, the printer, the printing paper is changed, but um, probably not a whole lot. Because the, the basis of printer paper was you wanted a paper that was smooth and very absorbent. Because the, the plates that you print from were very finely etched, usually. Um, like a lithograph stone um, is done with acid and, um, well, back in the day, it was done with acid and grease pencils. Um, so we used uh, fairly large sheets and they were 100% cotton for sure. Yes, uh, Eileen, 100% cotton and smooth. So it's not the same as watercolor paper. It's a smooth texture. And um, printer paper is usually um, made in a way that, um, I don't know how you do, uh, describe this. It's very uniform so that there isn't an area that sucks up more ink than another area. You know what I mean? 
So that's why it's called printer's paper, uh, especially made for printmaking. And um, when you would print, we printed with ink back then. There's, there's all kinds of different inks nowadays. Um, and the ink had to be put on your, uh, we used glass plates back then. And we would squirt out, or usually it came in a um, container, so we just scoop out a bit, put it on our the middle of the plate, take our roller and roll it. And we would have to roll it and roll it and roll it and roll it <laughs> a long time to get it the right consistency of and thickness because you didn't want it too thick. Then after you do, you get your um, ink on your plate, like not your plate that you're printing from, but your rolling plate. Then you take that and you roll it onto your plate. Uh, I can't remember how many times. There was a specific way of doing it. It's been too long for me to remember how exactly. So then you would place your sheet at the top of your plate and roll it onto your plate. You don't let it, you don't just place it down. You rolled it and then you would take a, um, what do you call them? Uh, the rant, oh, I can't think of the name. The disc that you would put on it. Now this was the old way of doing it. Um, they have rollers now and everything else. We didn't have that back then. We used um, a special, I can't think of it, the name of it. But anyways, um, and then when you took it up, you could, um, it would still be wet. You didn't leave it on your plate. You took it up and you hung it to dry. And then you could go back and do another one but you had to go through the same process so but the the most minute engraving would be picked up from this paper and it was so even and that's why when we did um, etching or um, whatever plates we were using you had to be very careful on how you handled it you had to wear special gloves because you didn't want to get a mark on it because the slightest mark if you were to put your thumb down accidentally and you had oils on your your thumb and then when you went to put the acid wash on that thumb mark would be left so it was a it was an awesome thing to to learn but uh, it's been, like I said it's been a while <laughs> but yeah you have to have 100% smooth paper now nowadays because we're working a lot with um, uh, paint basically uh, most of the time I see people doing prints with um, paint so it's not a really print ink per se so um yeah you'd get a really nice effect but it probably isn't as needed for the paint depending on what you're doing so um but it does it, it is a beautiful paper you can watercolor on it uh comes in different thicknesses also um i can't remember what the thickness was that we used it it was it was more like a cardstock weight as far as um, what I remember. But you can get thinner ones too. Uh, the ones I buy are made for yeah, France always makes beautiful paper. You can draw on it too. It's, it's a beautiful drawing paper. Um, sprays work fantastic on it. Oh, it would make beautiful journals for arting in, um, Eileen. It would. Um, it's not cheap. 
because of the way it's made, it is an expensive paper. Um, but it is, you can really tell the difference when you use it in um, printing with ink. Anything else you want me to, you need to know, Eileen? Hey, Jan, good to see you. Don't see anything. I'm, I got my YouTube, um, chat box up on my stream yard. So thought I would uh, probably get out a bunch of different colors, but I'm going to stay on the analogous side of the color. So I'm not going to go on the um, opposite of the color wheel. And if you want to know what analogous is, um, this is your color wheel. So if you were, say, doing red, you could go these three over here is analogous, or this here could be analogous, but you don't go across or the triad. No, it's so much. I just wanted to let them know. Yeah, it is a great, it is really great. Um, if you don't have a color wheel, get one. Doesn't matter how much you know. Um, Jen here? Oh, I'm on top chat. Let me see. Live chat. Andy, Eileen, Lisa. Oh, no, not that, Jen. It's a Jennifer, um, where is, Crafting House Kitty, Jen. Not, not, not Oz, Jen. Yeah, you would have done a lot, Candy. Throw your two cents in, too. If you got, if I missed something. It's been a long time since I've done printmaking. Hey, Kathy. Kathy, did you see my paper roll? <laughs> I think I beat you guys as far as uh, buying paper. <laughs> it's an awesome thing to have. We're going to test it out. I may as well cut some of them anyways, so I have some to play with. <laughs> I'll show you. I got a 15-pound roll of paper. <laughs> 1,600 sheets worth, or over 1,600 sheets worth. And it has a ripper. This is uh, 1,100 feet, <laughs> and it's butcher paper, but it's a special butcher paper, so it's not wax, and it doesn't have any additives in it. <laughs> so you can get it in different widths. I just got the 12-inch, but it's so much cheaper. 
better than using up all your um, copy paper. So we're going to test it, see how good it does. I know it works nice. It is it is smooth. It's got a little bit of tooth, so it's going to be great for drawing in um, colored pencil. And where might I find it? <laughs> Uline. <laughs> it's, it's white butcher paper on a roll, 1,100 feet. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to get some paint here, and I'm going to start off with blue, I think. Put this aside. I tried to get organized. You know, it doesn't always happen. Um, blues. Cobalt blue. Titanium white, maybe. Payne's gray. have some white titanium white somewhere. So I have cobalt blue, I have cobalt teal, however you say that one. I, I can never pronounce that one. Um, I also have schmalt hue. And I have some open, and this is thalo blue green shade, uh, Payne's gray, and titanium white. Now, when you're using um, artist grade heavy body, it's best to do it on a separate plate. Don't put it on your plate you're going to be printing from because you'll end up with globs. Oh, I order stuff from Uline. How did I don't know? You better go back there. <laughs> and they have craft and they have also craft paper in different colors. Titanium white, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do some of this too. I'm iridized and some buff. All right, so um, I can either make a plain. Um, background first, or you could use a stencil. I have a ton of stencils here. Oh, where did I put my rollers? Uh, just a minute, I gotta get my roller. So I just like to put it on this plate, and then you can print off of this one too. But this way you get an even um, application instead of big um, globs on your plate. And it's harder to get those off. So this is the first one. I'm just gonna Take my U line, and I'm gonna just put one on here. 
and I'm going to take stencil, get it, and I'm going to just put this one down, and I'm going to take this one up. This is nice because you can get the exact, look at that, I ripped it to the exact size. <laughs> How good is that? You don't use it, Barb? So we'll see how this comes off. Looks like I'm able to get into the um, crevices of the... Look at that. Comes up nice. takes, look at that, takes it up really nice, doesn't go through. Okay, let's put that aside for a second. Take our plate. Now you could just put this over here and take, let's see, I'm probably dry by now. Put another one on top, see if you can get anything off of it. I don't like to waste anything. You get a small print on. Okay, and let's put, hmm, let's do this one. I'm going to mix this one with a little bit of white and see what we get. So I'm going to use the titanium white. I'm using these up because they are very, very old. Normally I don't use um, expensive paint on the jelly just because you do use a lot of it and these are expensive. But these are very old paint. And if you don't use your acrylic paint, see how we get blobs there? Then your paint starts to go goopy. Let's put a little bit more of this on. Swirls. And I think I'm just going to try. Paper, newspaper. I right, just put it over top so I don't get paint on my hand. this on. Mm. 
I'm just going to put it right over top of this. See what happens. And you can do both sides too. something. Let that one dry while we take this one out. See what we got. That's kind of cool. Kind of reminds me of a tablecloth. <laughs> That's just the roller marks. But you can still see some of that through there. So I kind of like what's going on here. So let's take some titanium white and I'm just going to put it on this plate this time. And then just wanting to take up that blue that's up there. I'm going to just roll this on here. Ooh, there's a hair. No dog hairs allowed. You want a fairly thin layer. You don't want it too thick. Because what happens when you get a thick layer of paint when you're trying to um, remove a layer? It just soaks up the top part, not the whole thing. Now, some people like to let it sit. Me, myself, I don't. I find I get more rips when I do that. So I'm going to take this and let's put it on. Uh, no. Let's do this one. I'm going to put it on the opposite side. That way we can use it for book pages. And this one, we'll just use this. Oh, let's just do this. I was really good with cutting <laughs> both off. They're just perfect size. Uh, you can use that on the tables with. Yeah, um, yeah, I've seen some people use it on for for um, tables. Um, I do sometimes. I only haven't got any at the moment. Hmm, that didn't come up. But. kind of cool. I like this. I like this type of background. This will be great for either a book page or a background, the start of a background in a journal or even put it onto um, pieces of it for collaging. I like this. We still have some on there. Let's see if we can... This is going to be interesting. Left some on there, but I like I like it still. So I'm going to probably still print on that one. I think what I'm going to do now is a real dark one. So Payne's gray. If I can get it open. I do um, It says it's 40 pound weight. Yes, not, not the roll. It's the weight of the paper. 
It's 40 pound weight paper. I'm gonna pick out a stencil before I roll that out. I don't want something with too big a holes in it. Maybe that one. I want a bigger one. stencil. something that's not too got too much holes like too big of an opening let's see well let's do this one because you guys are really into the um clint so we could do that one on one and that one on the other one all right Now, I think I'm going to use this one and this one. These. There. All right. They sell gift. Yeah, they do. They sell all kinds of stuff. It's a dangerous place to visit. <laughs> birds on. Like so. And I'm just going to roll it. Don't know if it's going to go through. It doesn't look like it is. I think I need it thicker. thicker. There we go. Hmm. It's drying really quick. Why? Throw this on. Let's see if this did anything. Eh, kind of. I'm going to put this over top of this one, I think. Let's see if I get anything off of it. We're not out of space. Dry. And then I'm going to use this one, I think. Uh, 
um, tissue paper. They have tissue paper rolls? I'll have to look at that. Oh my God, they sell gift wrap 20 by 30 sheets. <laughs> you guys are so a little thicker than printer. Yeah, it is. But it's very absorbent. So there's what three layers so far on this one. So I'll take that up, let that dry, and then I think I'm gonna do um, put no not gesso matte medium on this one. I'm just taking some of that off. I don't want a really thick layer of, of medium on there. Okay. I'm going I'm to take this one. Yeah, tags, boxes, um, the cell, you know, the cellophane bags. Um, all kinds of stuff. This one dry a little bit. This one, I think I'm going to put a little titanium white here and there. And then a, a little dot dab of gel medium. I'm going to mix it up. So it's blotchy. Now you could just go ahead, if you were planning on doing a bunch of jelly plate prints, but you don't want to flip back and forth like I'm doing, you could just do the initial first layer on a whole bunch of them and then do the second layer instead of flipping back. Sometimes people get confused when I do it this way. Glassine paper. Acid-free tissue paper. Yep. <laughs> You're looking at that, Lisa. Did I create a monster? <laughs> I got most of it off. Look at that. It's pretty good. So it, it's excellent for jelly printing, I must say. So that there is almost... I don't have to do much to it, but it'd be kind of pretty um, for a face in here. And this just as the background kind of looks like clouds.
but I like that it's all blues. Now you can throw in, you could go the other way and go into the purples too. You're looking at their catalog. <laughs> See how this one's going. Not bad. But takes up all the, uh, pretty well, all of the, um, paint. Eileen, you were keeping it a secret. Come on, admit it. So that's pretty. I like that. And you could still add to that by putting a white layer over top of that. Maybe I'll do that. So let's play with some white. Like this old stencil. So I could use part of it. Don't have to use it all. Um, I could just use the butterfly or just the circle. Or put the hmm. No, well, let's let's play with it this one a little bit. Show you what else you can do with jelly prints. I think I'll put this off a bit. And then I'm gonna take a sponge. Mm. Makeup sponge. Now you could print on your your gel plate plate too, as far as um, using your inks. All right, so I'm gonna put a little bit of white on here. And just use this as a palette. I don't want all of the um, what's on here. You can use your makeup sponge. It's funny how some paint kind of um, goes dendritic. <laughs> so you can put, leave that. Let's do just going to put some more on the side here. that. Now see I got the print from the stencil on there. So this here I can put it over onto here. And just push it down, lift it. Do another one up here probably. Just lift it. Let's see if we can get some more of this print. That it's grungy, but be cool. Let's 
All right. And then what else can we put in here? Let those dry. I have forgot I have a nail appointment. Right. Oh, well, it's it's recorded. <laughs> it's a good thing. So I have a hair dryer here and I have a cool setting on it so I can use this to dry it. Now, let me think. What do I want to do? Mm, I guess I pretty well have to do um, matte medium. Make sure well, it's a little bit almost dry. Some of them aren't quite, but oh well, it's grungy. Off the side here, I have a bunch of um, newspaper, and I don't throw out these either. I will use these in collage also. Sometimes it's cool to have the print come through. All right, so we're going to use this one. I'm going to put it on this here. And none of this has uh, peeled, like, come uh, stuck on the plate so far. So that's good. And then the other one, this one, we'll put on here, I guess. Do it on an angle. Uh, I'm back. And I found it. Just got back from my garage and with, with our gift wrap dispenser from our old store. My dispenser is made out of wood, but I could paint it and wash it. 
no more are someone going to ask me for a piece of paper for my desk. Exactly, and you can get it in different widths. And you just rip it off, and you haven't got papers laying around because it's in a nice, nice, neat roll. Hey, try it. Try it. <laughs> All you can do is try. This is really working great on jelly prints. Look at this, guys. Even though I have like four layers of acrylic paint on here, it's still lifting. Come on, Eileen. You were the start of enabling paper. I like that. So that's what, four or five layers? If you don't like it, just keep adding to it. Um, that one didn't come up. Might have had a little bit too much, but you can see. Still a little more on the grungy side. You could still add to that or use it as is. All right. Let's see. What else? Uh, let's try cobalt. Light cobalt. Let's see what we can do with this one. And what do I want to do with it? Let's, uh, let's compare. So let's compare some copy paper let's see a piece okay I got a piece of copy paper out we'll see if it does the same if I can um, feel any difference so I'm using the same brand of paint I'll just use the little one for now. And let's do stencil quick. And let's let's do this one. Put it over top. And I'm going to just use this, but I want to lift with that one, the regular um, copy paper. See what the difference is. In order, no, I ordered the printmaker's paper. Oh, okay. <laughs> Your excuse, then. <laughs> Um, I want, I would be the one that got the cat's tail. <laughs> what? I used a large metal cutter for the pictures for my paper rolls. Like usually with the, um, regular printer paper you can't get a, a fresh crisp line from your stencils this way um thinking. cobalt and Phthalo blue, green blue shade. Let's try that. This is open. I'm going to put it on here. Let's 
I love the yellow blue. Such a pretty color. I didn't lift it yet. Yeah. Well, I'm going to take this paper off to the side here to put my stencil down on the paper so I get that stencil print. see eh, not bad I brayered it at the same time all right so let's dry that oh I gotta get that out up quick 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 um, let's use this Oh, that's cool. Lift. You never know what you're going to discover if you don't play. That's cool. Now I'm going to dry it with the hair dryer. Yep, that's the one. That's it. <laughs> All right. So now I'm going to, let's see. Uh, it's not quite dry. I've got to dry it a little bit more. Um. Virgin paper. Yep. Vir 40 pound virgin, virgin paper, white butcher paper. Yep. That's it. The roll. Um, six, was it? 1100 feet. Go big or go home. <laughs> Okay, I used open and it's going to take forever and ever 
to um, dry. So, if you want a lot of drying time, use open, but I don't. So I'm going to just roll some matte medium on the side here. And I'm going to very gingerly roll it on. And hopefully it won't mess it up too much. Okay, here's the uh, ordinary piece of copy paper, printer paper. And here's the regular paper. Let's see what side do I want? I'll put it on this side again. Now we just need a pizza rat. <laughs> well, that, yeah, it's a good idea, actually. Well, I was watching somebody's... Oh, it was that link you gave me. <laughs> Clean up that person with the unbelievable studio. And she had the pizza rat for drawing her canvases. That was so cool. Yeah, they're not as bad, I don't think, though. Now, this will be interesting. This one, probably, because I used the open paint, um, it'll be interesting to see what it does, how it lifts. It may not lift right. <laughs> um, so you might want to, if you're using open paint, to let it sit for a while to dry and soak up into the paper. But no, it's actually not doing too bad. Okay, there's now this is very interesting to me, anyways. <laughs> Um, look how smooth that print looks. See how smooth this is? Very smooth looking. Compared to, let's see, where did I have one? Um, Oh, this one here. See the difference? It's not as smooth looking. A little more grainy. And the reason that is, this is open paint. So it didn't totally dry. And when I put the matte medium on it, it blended into that. So it kind of smoothed it out. That's interesting. But it, it did go on the paper, but to put another layer on top of this, I wonder if it would be just as good as this. This one's got five layers on it, and it picked up everything. So we'll, we'll still play with it. Okay. There's just a really, it was leftovers. I didn't have as much matte medium on this plate, so it didn't pick up everything. So let's put in.
Let's use this one again. So, put this on top. And I'm going to use, do I want, let's use the titanium hard body. The only thing I don't like about heavy body paints, the darn screw lids. This dries very quickly. So if I put um, I'm going to put it over here for now. I'm going to take up the circles on this. We'll see how many um, layers we can get. It's kind of busy, but we can still play with it. this on this you are going to have to do a lot of gel printing to use all oh wait a minute I'll show you Lisa it looks like I'm the, I've done a whole bunch doesn't it Oh, to use all that paint, you mean? My paint? This is messy. It's kind of cool, though. So, hmm, what can we put in here? Maybe purple. I'm going to roll some purple. This is kind of a really light colored purple. I'm going to sample and it's starting to go. Wow. Very um, transparent. Got hair in there? What? Like I said, these are backgrounds for what I'm going to be doing. All right. And let's put it on the back of this one. This would be a good one for a book. I'm just going to cover this.
It's just the leftovers. Yeah, just leftovers. All right. Let's see if Just looking for another stencil. Something a little different. Maybe that one. That's kind of uh, clipped too. It's an old one. And that one. So what do we want to put on there? I think I'm going to put Let's try something. I'm going to take blue want it fairly um, even as far as thickness in your jelly printing because that will defy whether you get everything up or not. So I'm going to lay that down there. Nice and thick. And then I'm just going to pick it up with this. Maybe this one. And then I'm going to use the ghost print on the coffee paper. Wow, we got hit with a lot of snow and now they have a confirmed tornado. That is crazy. Isn't that crazy? Like tornadoes and snowstorms all at once. Same with um, thunderstorms when it's snowing. <laughs> What's the world coming to? Okay, so that's a little... That's kind of cool. And I'm going to take... See if I can pull more off. Have you used the Matisse paints and medium? I do have Matisse. Uh, well, no, not necessarily Matisse. It's the same company. Um, uh, what, the, what are they called? Atelier, it's called. 
Is that the one you're talking about? See? The Atelier is very nice paint, and you can get the one. The Atelier is the one that you can reactivate. Yeah, there's a, um, a special product you can get to reactivate. That's really cool. They are very nice paint, must admit. I haven't used per se the Matisse. So if they're anything like the atelier, they're they're awesome. Just grunging this up, taking some more out. Let's see. Okay. Now let's try that. Just gonna use some of the matte medium. Just throwing that on there. See if we can pull another print up off of this one. We may as well just use this. Get some of that stuff off. Crusty bits. well see it's not taking as much why i don't know but it did take quite a bit of it but there's still lots left over so what i would do because it's so busy with different types of pattern i would probably white out areas blotch blotch it out so let's uh let's see what happens if we use some um craft paint to lift this You can mix them. I have. And, uh, I don't have any problem with mixing craft paint and artist grade. Craft paint is more opaque. So if you want to get the um, um, transparency look, then just use your, you know, put it on the back of this one here. See what happens. And we'll just fill this one up here. Um, today HBO released their new series called Gilded Age. Oh cool. I'll have to watch that. I like the downtown. Um, how do you want? Hey, 
Hey, is Andrew? Okay, so that took that up. It's kind of cool. I like that. Very grungy looking, but it's nice. That's with the craft paint. So you're hiding some of that background that was on there if you didn't like it. So let's, let's put, I'm going to put matte medium on this one. And I'm going to see if I can lift what's on this plate. It has got some um, craft paint on it, but I think it would kind of look cool to block some of that out. So we'll see what happens. Nineteen eighty three. I don't think I've watched that. Nope, it's not coming up. Too much matte medium on it. So, or this is too wet. It is fairly damp. So if your papers are damp, it's not gonna pick it up. Let's see if we can pick it up off of this. So we'll have to give it another little go. Just grunged up the surface of some of these. We'll do some of this here too, May as well. Just pick it all up and. Mm, we could do that one, or we could do this one. Let's try this one. If you like Yellowstone, then 1983 is about John Dutton's father. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, what? Sam Elliott. I like Sam Elliott too. Although he's pretty long in the tooth right now. <laughs> Sometimes it just doesn't come up. Came up a little bit, but not as much as I wanted. Let's see if this one came up. Yeah, this one came up a little bit. Took some of those grungy bits off, but grunged it up a little bit. So when it gets to that point, I don't mess with it anymore. Just take a baby wipe and clean it off. No, you could probably take tape and stuff like that, but myself, I know, I know myself, I wouldn't use the tape, so there's no point in doing it for me. You do you.
I just know I don't. I might later in the future, but I hardly use washi tape and I got a ton of it. Yeah, that's one thing I gotta start using. All right, now the next thing I wanna do is put some papers. And I'll show you what we did here. And you're gonna you're probably thinking I did a whole bunch of prints, but we did only a few. So we put this one, this one, this one. Nothing on that side. Nothing on that side. So one, two, three, four, five, six papers. Fabric strips. They could be cool to pick up crusty bit. Yeah, probably. I haven't tried that before. I don't I don't keep my fabric strips. <laughs> oh, you mean um actual i'm thinking of drier fabric things i don't have a lot of fabric um once i got into mixed media for some reason i got i got rid of all my fabric <laughs> i had a ton of it i kept a little bit but not much so Let's, let's see, do I have any more left here? That. Okay, I still have some sheets of that. So what I want to do, I think I still have some rice paper here on the bottom somewhere. Mm. pieces. I really like the look of this iridized bronze fine by Golden when you spray water on it. I just think it looks cool. So what I want to do, I thought it would be kind of cool if we use these. I'm thinking of the Klimt Before this dries, water. Okay. 
this is a fine mist. And I'm going to let it soak. Bye, Dot. Have fun. Now, if anybody knows, um, has worked with this, you probably know that when you wet this paint, um, the let's see, I'm gonna let that one dry. The um, color of aqua comes out. This is rice paper. I thought we could play with this a little bit. There's, that's cool. See how it's starting to go green and bluish color? That's what it does. Let's use one of those papers. See what it does. And you can get lots and lots of prints off of one sheet. Let's do a piece of actual tissue paper. I'm just going to do a double sheet. So see what happens when it soaks through. that dry. All right. So, um, thinking, thinking. If I were to wet this paper, with a, this is a fine mist, continuous, and then put it down on this. Let's see what happens. Maybe nothing. I don't know. We're playing. You can get a lot of pulls. Yeah, a, a huge amount of pulls. Now, once you've done all of the pulls, though, that, like, if I were to wet this again, I don't think you'll get any more green or turquoise color coming out of it. No. No, didn't do anything. Okay, good to know. Let's do this one. See if there's anything else. <laughs> there you are. I haven't tried any of the other. Um, I think it's just the bronze one that does this. I could be wrong though. I don't know. I'm going to dry this.
right, so let's pick this up with, how about cobalt? Since we like that look, let's try and do it with cobalt. A little bit of white, maybe. A smidge. So he did have a lot of cobalt, or not cobalt, um, turquoise in his paintings. That fine mister is really good for when you're doing canvas work and you want to keep your paint a little more flowing. You just spray your canvas with it. And also uh, spray your paint palette to keep your paint from drying out. Ooh, this is cool. Look at that one. That's cool. I don't think I'll do anything more to that. <laughs> um, let's try that one. should we pick this one up on? I wonder if it would look good on black. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's do it. So I have a whole bunch of black paper. Thanks to Eileen. enabling. She made me buy this. <laughs> so I'm going to pick it up with matte medium. edges. Yeah, that one turned out cool. I like that. Mm, that's interesting. 
You'll like this one, Eileen. Very, very grungy. So, a little bit of the green showing through in the gold. Kind of cool. Could add to that. All right, so let's do. Let's play with some white. Put a little bit of white here and there. And then a little bit of this with it. And let's see what it does as far as mixing after we roll it. If it does it block that color from coming through? Or actually that's kind of cool on its own right there. Let's stop. Then missed it. Let it sit for a little bit. See what we get. We can pick it up because it's wet. We don't have to let it dry. You could let it dry, but it, if you let it dry, those um, aqua areas won't be as pronounced because they, they all pool up together. So let's put that on. Um, get another piece of... Need something fairly absorbent though. Let's get a piece of. Here's this paper. We can use this. It's a little damp, but maybe we'll get a reaction out of it. More stamp. Bye, Dot. Stay safe. Yeah, it's fun just to watch, for sure. That's well, kind of cool. It's like wrinkly. So you got a little bit. I wish, you, uh, maybe I'll take that color down a little bit. There. And you can see the green a little better. It's a lot um, darker than what's showing. Um, I'm just going to put some. Even though there's water on this, I'm just going to see what happens. A little bit of um, there we go. I'm gonna let that sit. Um, what can I do? Maybe pretty wet still. Let's 
let's, let's go on the back of this one as well. edges on here. Black and gold. It's pretty. No, oh, the camera doesn't like it though. Now, if I spray this, let's see what happens. Quick. Tear off another. <laughs> That's so great. Oop, moved it. It was slippery. So I guess this paper was designed because if you're wrapping meat <laughs> you don't want it to fall apart use that one so it's a start look how green I don't know if that's still green that is love that It's a good start for something. This is wet. See the green in it? This one's got a lot of green in it. It's not showing on camera, but there's a ton of green. It's really actually quite dark. We could put this. This is green, actually. You just have to play with it. Very mucky, that one. But they're all possibilities. You just have to have fun with them. Now I can take, let's see what I can take up with this one. Just a white pole. I got quite a bit of paint in there.
plug when it it is the paint that does the difference and not depending on yeah you never know what you're getting these would be really cool to find objects in too it's kind of like putting spray on your jelly print it's kind of interesting color there's a little just the tiniest bit of green in it you probably can't see it it's actually pretty this is neat too I really like this paper though it it really um, soaks things up all right Let's clean the plate Juices under there. yeah let's um what can we do do you want to try some lindy's <laughs> i wonder if you mixed lindy's where am i going to put it Um, some of the pearlescent ones that are two toned. Let's see, just picking some out here. Yeah. Try these. All right. Now I wonder Take this. Let me think. Okay, so if I were to we're gonna try do with some experiment in here. <laughs> I've got white here. This is how you find things out. Just play. Play and see what comes out of it. If I do that, put this on top. Be sure it's... I want it fairly good and adhered then okay so we have 
the Lindy's, and this is um, let's take. I'm still thinking <laughs> what to do. I got a million ideas coming in, and I'm going to take this off first in between the. Um, yeah, I've seen that. It's cool. I'm just going to try and get as much paint from... There. And then I'm going to spray it. Hopefully these darn things work. Hey, Colleen. And we're going to see what happens. I'm going to really spray it, though. This is supposed to have, like, a shimmer... Um, two-toned effect, per kind of a bluey purple and brown and shimmer. Um, I don't want to waste that, so let's put that on top of this. So I'm going to lift this. I'm going to throw it on top of here. <laughs> Maybe take another one. Throw it on top of there because that stencil's all full of paint. No point in wasting. Okay, so now I could either take it up while it's wet or let it dry. What should I do? Take another piece off my roll. Sounds so nice. I don't have a million papers sitting. Okay, now I'm just going to smush it. Lena, I want an Amazon link for winning lottery numbers. <laughs> now, Cass, I'm making sandwiches with my paper. <laughs> Um, well, this is cool, interesting. So we'll see what it get. once it dries. If, if the shimmer shows up or not. I don't see any, but it might be show it might show up when it's dry.
That's the leftovers. It's kind of like that um, gold or bronze and water thing in a way. That's interesting. Okay, so I lifted the stencil. That's what we got. And then to get a little bit of blue in there, we'll see how much um, sparkle we get. Now, if we just spray it, let's use a green now. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. How did I do that? Oh, my gosh. You know what this is? This is interesting. The stencil had the gold paint on it. And I sprayed it with the green Lindy's. So, and then I put the paper on top. So you're getting bits of the stencil color with that. That's cool. Oh, that turned out really cool. Now, can I do that again? <laughs> I don't know. Hmm. Oh, how about if we try the bronze iridescent with Lindsay's instead of water? Let's try it. Um, let's pick this up. That's cool. All right. So let's do this again. And we'll roll on through the stencil. it up. Actually, I'm just going to throw it up down there. I'll just pick that up, this. And now I'm going to use this one to use the purple or the blue. We'll use the blue. See what well, maybe the purple. See if that's what happens. Okay, let it sit. I 
it down. We'll see how the interesting. It might change as it dries. That's kind of cool because you get some really dark, dark, dark. <laughs> it is. I mean, it is. It's my lab experiments. Well, that's kind of cool. You're seeing a, a little bit more color, darker color. Okay, so let's put this one on. And... That roll of paper makes me feel like I have an endless supply. <laughs> Could be dangerous. Could end up with a lot of prints because you're never running out. All right. So this time, let's do. Okay, let's put this aside. That's pretty. I like that. Let's throw some. Oh, I'm going to throw this one on. Thread. And then, how about we put this on first this time? Maybe a thinner layer. on this could be my um clumped book of jelly prints i know it's like it was meant to be that's the way i'm looking at it <laughs> i just seem to cut the perfect width that up and let's use green let it sit for a bit that's interesting so the colors are a little bit brighter um it's funny this one was supposed to be the red but i don't see any red in it Although the gold has got almost a rust color now. That's interesting. That might be kind of cool, actually. Let's see if we put more on there. It does. That down. Either. 
Yeah, it's a little more reddish. That was that, this one here. Uh, moon Shadow Mist. Hmm. Crow's Nest Copper. I know. That's cool. It almost looks like trees. Doesn't that look like trees? That's cool. What other colors do we got? How about if we put a stencil through? Um, that Throw this on. Pick it up through the stencil. Um, do you think the cutter will also cut rolls of rice paper? Hmm. I don't know. It's it, it's got a spring load to it, so it's not necessarily sharp. It's more or less like a ruler. Mm, no fussy with that one. It's kind of cool. You never know what you're going to see in these. That's kind of neat. Um, color. Orange. Ooh, let's see what this one does. Actually, mm -hmm. I'm going to just spray, see what, and I'm going to dry this just to see what happens. that won't work because it needs to be soaking into something in order to spill that color out. Oh, that's cool. That looks rusty. That one was, was it this one? No. Oh, it was this one. Um, <laughs> bucket of blood red. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Looks more brass to me.
dry that now and pick it up with um, cream. with some craft paint. I like experimenting like this. It's fun. Maybe that's what I'll be doing this weekend. <laughs> it's plain. Anyone want to join me? I'll go on um, StreamYard. You can join me there. Maybe I show would die for him. <laughs> do these and then I'll show you what we've done. Wait until we all are equipped with the dispenser. <laughs> there. I don't know why I didn't get one sooner. It's so much easier. Well, that's interesting. Kind of cool. Good start. It's got a little bit of shine, see, from the gold. It does suck up all the paint, though. Like, you, my plate's pretty well clean. So it's good paper for doing this, for sure. Look at that one. It's got a lot of sparklies in it. Well, that's nice. And it's got little bits of green running through it too. That's cool. I like that. It's, it's almost smooth, so I think because um, when I put the um, craft paint on top, it wasn't quite dry, so it smushes into the other stuff. Yeah, isn't that pretty, how the gold pushes it back like that? That's so pretty. All right, so let's take a look at all the prints we did. This over here somewhere. Oh boy. A ton of stuff. 
here. All right, so those are the ones we just did. Um, this one turned out really cool. It's got a lot of green in it. Blue. So. Doesn't have a lot of shine. I don't see any of the um, mica from the spray in it. Very, very slight. Um, this one, it's more of a more of a coppery rust color, I would say. And it's got it does have shine on it. Uh, it's kind of hard to show on wine. Just a plain, but I'll still use it. Another rusty colored one. This would make a cool mm, part of a house. Wall of a house. That would be cool. And this looks like a forest to me. Trees. There's the other side. That looks like a tree there. It's fun to look at these. Um, even if you just use the Lindy's and then did a bunch of these, because it's fun to look at. There's creatures that come out of these. <laughs> at least that's what I see. It's usually see what you're oh, fond of. I like portraits and that type of thing. There's another tree here. Another woods. And put them all different ways because you'll see other things. Nothing on that side. That one's... See now, see this part? That's where there was more matte medium on there. So it's smoother looking. It's interesting. I don't think there's anything on that. Nope. And then just that one. This is kind of cool. It's busy, but it could be calmed down. And then that's the other side. It's a little bit of shine to it, not much. This has a little bit of shine on it. Uh, I don't know if I can get it. There. See it? Nothing on the other side. This was cool. Very simple, but we can add to that one. And another. This is the one with the trans. I think this one is the one. I don't know. One of these was the one that transferred from the jelly print or from the stencil. So that was kind of cool. I don't see any um, mica from the sprays though. There's another. I wonder if the other uh, golden ones uh, release a color. I like this one too. Very shiny. Another one. These would make a really nice booklet of, of um, for a book. Black. The other one, a little bit different. Here's the other print. This one's pretty. 
I like that one. And this one was nice. You can see the green more in that one. Very pretty. Look at this one. This is the rice paper. It really picks up the green. Mm, just doesn't show on on the camera though. It's gorgeous. Really like that one. I might print this one and send it to you guys. That one. I don't mind that one. That's kind of cool. Soft one. Add to that. So don't throw them out. Just keep adding to them. That was cool. I like that one. Blues. That one. I find if you just do the um, a bunch of prints in specific colors, too, you'll use them more. Although you can reuse them and reprint over top of them. So that was fun. <laughs> yeah, I think I got some really good prints. I like that you know now are talking about making books and not folders after you got the dispenser. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I could make a, um, what do you call them? One of these. An accordion. With, you know, because you're endless. Um, you don't have to glue them together. Okay, and then you can put different papers in there. I even sewed. I like these. I think they're going to be really cool for even drawing in. Because they're so simple to make. You don't have to worry about a binding. Just the covers. Front and back cover. And they keep going and going and going. I'll have to do some more of these when spring comes around again. But I do send these um, some of these out to um, blooming artists. We'll be getting some. Um, Jen, Dot, Kathy <laughs> managed to get it out today or not today uh, this week. Uh, imagine if you did not rip the paper. You could jelly a whole pyrus in one sitting. <laughs> oh my god. How do I attach the pages? What to to each other or on the book? See? 
It's just a continuous um, accordion to each other. Uh, it's an, I just um, fold them. So when you're folding them, you fold them like that. Just fold them like you would a book. Um, you can either just attach them like, you know, this on top of each other. Um, depends on your jelly print too. If, if your, your um, pages are printed on both sides, then it's a little more difficult because then you don't want to cover up. Normally I would do this so that it would be doubled, but one side would would be um, without anything on it, and the other side would have a print. It's on my um, members, blooming artist. I, we did that last week. But I'm going to use some of these definitely for drawing on, for painting on. Because I like when you're, they're, they almost feel like leather too when they're, they got everything on it. And then you, if you, if you don't know which side to um, use, scan them. Use your uh, scans instead of the original, if, especially if it's one that you really, really like. I would scan it or try and do it again. Mm. Did you see on Bohemian Crafting? <laughs> I was watching that this morning. Where she used her laminator and a um, laser print to put... Um, heat transfer paper on and it, it worked so she took um, I think she broke something put it through her, her um, printer her laser printer and then put it through her um, laminator without the lamination just another piece of paper on front and back but on top of that laser print that she has on her paper she put that foil stuff the heat um active foil and it just goes on the the print it was awesome like holy crow is that and she said it works too with an iron but you have to have a laser print check her out that was her last video it was amazing. I thought, ha. Oh. Here we've been struggling <laughs> trying to write something and put that foil on it. And we'd have those pens and all that. Whereas you could just do that. And it, it, it it's beautiful too. And it doesn't stick to the whole page, just to the laser part, the ink, the toner. And all she did was use her laminator. So I got to try that. Definitely. All right. Well, I guess I'll let you guys go. And um, hope you have a fantastic weekend. And you're able to get into your sketchbook or um, paint or fabric or stitch, whatever your creative outlet is. And just uh, zone out in that. Have a fantastic weekend. So we'll see you all on Tuesday. And I'll have a new watercolor to show everybody. <laughs> I got some watercolors. Yeah, you're welcome. I hope um, you had fun watching and I uh, hope you'll give it a try too. Bye for now, everybody.